Brothers and sisters, hearty welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter. We had been journeying with Jesus the risen Lord during the past three weeks. Jesus giving his disciples a new understanding of life in its holistic perspective. Death has no more sting over humanity. Life is the sign of victory. Through the Divine Mercy Sunday, as well as through the experience made by the Emmaus disciples on their way towards Emmaus, Jesus encounters them and gives them a new perspective of the new life that he is giving to the humanity today. On this fourth Easter Sunday, we are invited to dwell on the person of Christ as the door for us towards the Father. Jesus speaks about three kinds of imageries, the sheep, the shepherd, and the door. He says, I am the door through which you can enter into the lives of the sheepfold, bringing hope to us, the relationship that Jesus is holding with the people, the relationship that the church is holding today as the shepherds to lead the people towards the Father. It's a wonderful opportunity for us today to nuance on this passage presented to us by John the Evangelist in the chapter 10 of his Gospel. Three imageries, sheep, shepherd, and the door. Let's take them one by one and try to understand the concept that is being presented before us. First and foremost, there is this imagery of the sheep. All of us are well aware, we can never speak about a shepherd without the concept of the sheep. But the most interesting aspect about the sheep is this. The sheep is considered to be an erratic animal, an animal which moves on its instinct with a short-term plan of life. Archbishop Joseph Pamplani in one of his articles mentions about the specific characteristic of the sheep. He would say, a sheep is a short-sighted animal. You look at the sheep, how it behaves. It always looks downward, nibbles at the food items that are thrown here and there. And in this process of grabbing the food, the sheep moves forward without knowing the direction that it is taking. It goes away from the fold of the companions as well as gets lost of its sight. It cannot return to the focus because it does not know how to get back to the original fold. Rick Warren, one of the famous American authors, in one of his books mentions about this aspect of human being as a sheep. He says, the most and the biggest danger of the humanity today is short-term thinking. In order to achieve the immediate target, we grab the opportunity for feeding, in fact, the longer and higher perspectives of life without having any effort done to see beyond the tunnel. And that exactly is our problem today. One of the things that we need to realize is this, in every one of us, there is this sheep dimension. We look at our advantages and the immediate happenings that can make us happy without thinking, without suffering and difficulty, we will never be able to achieve that higher perspectives of life. Let's realize the sheep inside of us. This brings home to us the second imagery that Jesus is presenting before us. That is the imagery of the shepherd. There are in fact two kinds of shepherds whom we can depict. One I would call 
the cowboy-like shepherd. When I was a little child and when I was at home, one thing that used to enchant me and painfully make me aware of the cruelty of the humanity was this. There used to be a lot of animals brought from across the state and they were led towards the destination where they would be either sold or killed. In the process of leading these animals towards that destination, the men were very brutally handling these animals. They used to beat them. Sometimes they even used to twist their tails so that they would run faster and reach the destination faster. They would sometimes fix an iron piece under the foot of the animal so that they can run faster. How cruel they were. And this later was in fact considered to be an inebriated attitude of the one who is leading these animals, later termed as cowboy culture. Leaders who are not willing to be compassionate towards those whom they are leading. But there is another kind of shepherds whom we can also see who are very gentle in their pasturing. They always live in accordance with the morals and the ethic code that is presented before them. They are people who are compassionate and considerate in animating this fold that is entrusted to their care. Yes, my brothers and sisters, these two dimensions need to be taken into consideration by us as well. In the political, socio-cultural, and even in the religious leadership level, we find leaders belonging to the cowboy culture as well as to the gentle culture of their pasture. Yes, we have to become more and more conscious of this leadership dimension. When you look into the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we find a quiet number of times this concept of the shepherd dimension highlighted. In the book of Numbers, Joshua was appointed as the shepherd of the people of Israel. In the book of Psalms, we would find Yahweh himself is the shepherd. In Ezekiel and Jeremiah, we would find the prophets insisting on the aspect of becoming good shepherds, discerning them and differentiating them from the bad shepherds. Come to the gospel, we see Jesus speaking about a good shepherd who would lay down his life for the sake of the sheep. We need to practically apply this shepherding dimension in our own personal, familial, congregational and societal lifestyle. How much we need to be shepherds who are compassionate, understanding and benevolent towards those whom we lead, perhaps as a father, mother, parents, superiors and leaders who are entrusted with responsibilities. Yes, my brothers and sisters, having these imageries in front of us, we come to that final imagery that Jesus is speaking, the door. Jesus says, I am the door through which you should enter. Anyone who does not enter through the door to the sheep is a thief. We must take the background of Israel in order to understand this concept of the door. The sheep were normally led into a cave which had in fact only one door. And this door would not be closed basically because if the door is closed, the sheep would be suffocated. So the shepherd would lie across the door. Any wild animal which comes to attack the sheep will have to first encounter the shepherd and shepherd would defend his sheep, sometimes he would even lay down his life for the sake of the sheep. It reminds us of the redemptive death of Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of us sinners. Yes, a door is always an eternal possibility. You enter into the possibilities of your life through this open door. 
A door always brings home to us a sign of protection. If you enter through the right door, there would be someone to embrace you. There would be someone to come closer to you and tell you, come in. A door is always a sign of a mystical experience. I would rather say, it's just like a drop of water falling into the lake and getting disappeared in the lake. You become one with the one who is there to receive you. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is the concept of the sheep, shepherd, and the door that Jesus is presenting before us. See how beautifully the Lord says, the shepherd enters through the door, which means he has a right-minded perspective. The Lord says, the shepherd calls the sheep by name, which means he has an intimate relationship with the sheep. The Lord says, the shepherd leads them outside, which means he accompanies the sheep always. And the Lord says, the shepherd is in fact the one who is taking charge of the sheep's life itself. He lays down his life for the sake of the sheep. Shall we become this shepherd who is conscious of the sheep inside of himself or herself and go to that door which is the eternal possibility of our life? Jesus Christ. Amen.